Well, hello there, I'm Dr. Robert Chung, and welcome to your friendly proctologist. Thanks so much for being here. I personally welcome you to this space. I really hope these videos are helping you, by the way. That's the whole point of this channel. And wherever you are in your recovery, I hope you're dealing the best that you can. Let's talk about something cool today. Let's talk about bidets or bidets, <laughs> however you want to pronounce it. And I had to look up the history because I didn't know. But apparently it was first invented in the 1600s in France. How cool. And back then they only bathed once a week. So how do you freshen up in between the number one and number twos? Well, they used the bidet, a splashing water jet or water splash uh, against your private areas. Maybe they had a hand pump then, floor pump to get the water up. But what a great inventive idea, right? And what about today? Where has the bidet gone and where is it transformed into? Well, I think, in my opinion, the most advanced bidet are in Japan. They're literally robots. <laughs> the toilet has become a robot, okay? It will lift up the seat automatically. It might play music. The toilet seat is worn for you. Of course, you have complete control. You have different modes. I mean, all you need is this robot to have arms come out of the toilet and like give you a hug or give you a back rub. Maybe they'll massage your legs while you're trying to poop. Maybe they'll talk to you. I mean, I'm getting carried away, but that is the next thing. Maybe poop AI. Oh my whoa <laughs> and there's other cultures that of course use bidets not to that degree of technology but why in america have we not adopted it what's wrong with us are we behind the game or are we ahead of the game don't know but there's a resurgence of this bidet and its use, right? Definitely you see more of this homeopathic, naturopathic type of treatments and other medical conditions. So what about the bidet, right? And I think it look, takes some looking into. Um, Guy asked the question, why hasn't America adopted it? And from what I gather online, because I have my own suspicions, but we are super self-conscious about how dirty we are or how sanitary something is. We like, you've got to have gloves on, you know, you've got to scrape things off. You know, when you wipe, it's got to be a white tissue paper, totally clean. That's our obsession. And so we shower multiple times a day maybe in the morning, before bed, and then after we work out, maybe after we, or before we go out to get ready to go out, right? And the toilet paper seems to be the easiest way for us to deal with it. It's hygienic, we feel. It's, you know, we don't have to get wet and then totally get everything splashed all over. We're also super conscious about how dirty our toilets are, okay? And we don't want bacteria or dirty stuff on our skin after we just took a poop. We'd rather wipe it off with paper. Another thing that's interesting, I find interesting, is like economics, right? What pressures do we have on our daily lives that we don't even know that's under the, under the ground? Like Charmin and all these paper toilet toilet paper companies, they have an interest in us using toilet paper, right? So whoever invented it was making money and has an interest in keeping that technology alive. If, you, if a country moved to bidets, they'd be out of business. I mean, just think of the times when COVID hit. I mean, California, everybody was buying and hoarding toilet paper. That was like one of the first things, okay? I, maybe I think I'd want food or food that can last a long time. No, people wanted toilet paper and paper towels. Can you believe that? That's that's how sick we are in America, folks. We, we're sick, okay? <laughs> so, all right, on to the next thing. All right, so when it comes to bidets, what versions are there? Well, there's, there's lots that are available. I did a quick search online on the internet. Okay, you've got the most simple kind, which is simply a squeeze bottle with a nozzle that points upwards, okay? Self-explanatory. Then you've got more technology into it, but of course some people don't know how to do plumbing or don't want to do all that plumbing. So you've got things that are easily attached to the toilet seat and you've got more sophisticated ones like the ones from Japan. I mean, some people import those toilets from Japan so they can have all those amenities. Super neat. 
So what is a bidet good for? Well, obviously it's to get clean, right? After a bowel movement. And it can be more efficient because the anus, you know, if you look at my hand here, got a lot of wrinkles in there. And if we were to do that with a tissue paper or a wipe, we've got to be digging in there with our fingers, which we know can kind of make that skin extremely angry and irritated. And the water is one of the most gentle things you can ever get, right? Another thing too is you can use it before the bowel movement or even like during because it's massaging your muscles, okay? And some people find it actually helpful to use it before having a bowel movement. You know, there's people that are using like coconut oil or what have you, lubrication to put their finger in their bottom and to before they get on the toilet. And I think more than the coconut oil doing its thing, it's the finger stretching out your muscle, kind of preparing things to allow it to open up and relax more. And it also can work like a cyst bath. Some people find it extremely relaxing. And in my opinion, cyst baths, that's what it's for, is to allow that anus to feel comfortable, to relax, and all your pelvic floor muscles drop down. And that in combination with deep breathing, man, combining it with a lot of different things, maybe your bathroom experience, your number two experience could be a lot better. Okay, so what are the bad things about a bidet? Well, the first thing, because I'm an American and I'm obsessed with cleanliness, is the sanitary nature of it. If you've got the nozzle in your toilet and you flush the toilet with pee or poop in it, you're going to be kidding yourself to think that the splashing is not going to get on that tip, okay? Or even the splashing after that water jet hits your butt doesn't splash back or get there. You know, they've done studies. They found that 85% of these nozzle tips actually have bacteria on it. Now, bacteria is on everything, right? It's on our countertops. It's in our hair and our hands. Is that necessarily a bad thing, Dr. Chung? And I'd say no, but if you're immune compromised, maybe that may make a difference to you, right? You don't have a relationship with this bacteria and that could create an imbalance in your natural flora. So using somebody else's bidet, mm, maybe you should think about it, you know? The other second thing is uh, it can be super relaxing. So what does that tempt you to do is sit there and sit there and sit there and sit there. So your hemorrhoids, if you've got hemorrhoid issues, will continue to fill up with blood. And so if you've got bleeding, they may drip more. Or after you get up off the bidet, you may feel swollen down there. Not so great. Some other findings from studies on bidets is that you can actually get uh, skin irritation, itchy skin, which is what many people use bidets for. But many people think that the poop is super itchy. That's why they use the bidet. But they found that if you can, if you overuse the bidet, um, you can actually get rid of the natural oils in that skin around the anus and then it causes itchy dry irritated skin and that's that's kind of super interesting so is too much of anything a bad thing yeah i think that applies here as well another thing that's super interesting is fecal incontinence or anal incontinence right it's either gas liquid stools or even more solid stools and they find this with people that already have incontinence issues to begin with what they believe is happening is the water jet is forcing the water in the anus and so now your rectum has some water in there and people have accidents after using the bidet and it's kind of like an enema you have water up in there it kind of fills your rectum a little bit and then things just kind of fall out without their control again it happens most often with people that already have incontinence issues so do i approve of bidets i absolutely do approve i think they can be super helpful another tool to try out to have in your tool armament to heal your bottom end whenever you have issues should everyone adopt the bidet and use it that has bottom end issues no i don't think so um, again i think if you want if you're interested in it go ahead and try it so start out with a squeeze bottle. Don't go out and buy the expensive equipment. It's just not necessary, right? All you need is just to squeeze water against it and pretty much everything's gonna be able to come off. What's another advantage of a squeeze bottle is that you can microwave it and you can heat it up. So then you have a nice warm bath to, you know, it's super exciting. I bet you can't wait to use your bidet, right? And I think that's an advantage because some of these, um, the cheaper 
super electronic ones that you fix to your toilet, it just comes right from the toilet bowl water supply. So then it's not heated, it's, it's gonna be cold and your anus probably doesn't wanna be shocked with some you know, cooler water. Um, the other thing too is you should watch out for bacterial contamination okay um, you know if other people are using it you know you may want to clean the thing or definitely clean it when you clean your toilet so maintenance will be something that you want to be aware of your squeeze bottle should be cleaned right and also that nozzle or if you're using a more permanent setup in your toilet this can be great for surgery. Maybe you just want, you're gonna have surgery soon and you wanna know like, how the heck do I clean down there? I don't wanna wipe, there's cuts and stitches and everything's sensitive. I don't wanna damage anything. The bidet can be great and squeeze bottle again, is super simple to use anytime, any place. So thanks for taking this deep dive into bidets, bidets with me. I really learned a lot. Thanks to all of you who've asked the question. And I hope you have a great day and continue that recovering journey. Thanks. Bye-bye.